get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. I have been waiting for a while. I'm very excited today's guest. Today we have Ian Stanley. He's a top direct response marketer. He's written email copy for large seven and eight figure companies with email lists topping 1.2 million subscribers. He's the founder of Fixed Water, F-I-X-T, and is on a mission to change people's lives by providing drinkable water no matter the condition. He even has disgusting videos where he's collected water with mud and waste and drinks it after being filtered by a fixed water pitcher. Ian, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. So many questions I have, and I have to start with where are all the places that you have drank water from after putting through the fixed pitcher? Um, <clears throat> through the pitcher? Yeah. Uh, I've done toilet water. Mm-hmm. I've done the... But toilet you know, water, it was a public... Re- it was not your own toilet water, right? It was It was not my own toilet yeah, so- water. It was at a public, a public bathroom. <laughs> okay. uh, you'll see, we'll, we'll be filming... Uh, Unfortunately, my voice has been a little bit wonky, and if I if I have a slight cough, I like never get this. But taking care of the new puppy, I barely get any sleep. So, um, Maybe, yeah. I uh, I'll be filming hopefully this week the new uh, the new toilet water video where I'm I'm actually planning to go to uh, UT here in Austin and go to a dorm bathroom. Horrible, a frat yeah. bathroom. Yeah, I can't think. Going to like a train less. spotting bathroom. Well, the next one's gonna be a gas station. Like just dingy middle of nowhere gas station, so that's uh that's the that's next coming step up. So where life. else? So public restroom. Um, well, I've done so with the bottle. The bottle isn't the advanced filter that that you can literally filter. I mean anything but the ocean water essentially. I mean it does radiological contaminants. So really? that I'm also I'm going to be going to Chernobyl at some time in the next uh, month or two here. Probably actually going to be taking. Uh, my new puppy Poseidon on a uh, cross country adventure for November. Going to get an RV or a van and drive across the country and report on water and you know. You're, put my key I don't know. Up. You're either very brave or very confident. So how do you know that? How are you so confident that you can go into that public restroom? And I mean, I've seen the, the videos. Anyone can go to fixedwater.com and check out I mean you you demonstrate it right on there this muddy yeah. murky horrible well I got it from the dog walking slash like dog bathroom area that's just across from my house here and put the why, I mean what made you even think of doing I mean why why there I mean well I thought like I was gonna get dirt for a dirt test and then I thought oh that's the worst dirt I can think of and it was honestly it was close by <laughs> I, I could walk out my door Walk across a little bridge and uh, and and get that that dirt. So, I mean, the reason uh, maybe maybe it's a mixture of of confidence and bravery. Um, but yeah, how are you so confident in this? If I don't have that level of confidence, then why would I expect somebody else? Mm-hmm. They don't have to drink that water. Like that's the, and it's not the point. Like the filter is definitely not going to last as long if you're running that through it. Right. Um, but if you know demonstration actually uh, sort of a mentor of mine says um, what presentation without demonstration is just a conversation mm. so That's you know for one. me it's it's about undeniable proof right it's about it's if you're if you do a demonstration and somebody's 99 percent sure that that it was real then in my opinion they're 100 percent it's 100 percent doubt right. because you can't have that little one percent inkling so right. the more extreme the demo, the better the response, the more emotion you create, the more people tend to buy. Yeah. Uh, as far as confidence, I mean, I've seen all the lab tests. I have on my desk here, I literally have stacks 
of lab tests from you know Hong Kong, China, Africa, to you know the tests in LA to you know all over the place. Where I mean, like going to Chernobyl will be the the scariest of them, but actually most confident really in that because <clears throat> with the radiological contaminants, it actually removes like a hundred percent. Essentially, really? like they'll actually take like there'll be like five hundred like a you know measure of five forty and it'll go down to zero. Um, which wild. there really aren't any other filters. Yeah. And sort of the shocking, the weird thing about water is sort of how bad, like every day you, you do a little more research and every day you're like, is, how can this be real? Like, how can it be this bad? Like I was just doing more research on chromium. what's stuff. actually in the drinking yeah, water? Yeah, like what's in water and how much of it is everywhere. And then like even, and how much of it's not publicized very well and how little people, you know, see it. Even like all along the West Coast, there's higher levels of radiological contaminants in the water because of Fukushima. Um, you know, they've yeah. literally carried across the ocean over there, and it's like nobody. I you know, I used to live in San Diego. I was never sitting there going, well, "I wonder, I wonder if there's a you know radon two 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 in my water." <laughs> it's not like the first. You don't wake up and go. No, but I mean, it? there's the study. I mean, there's prescription drugs in a lot of water, right? I mean, what kind of drugs are, what have you found with your research? There's just, there's all sorts of runoff. I mean, it's, there's heavy metals, there's, I mean, there's 140 different contaminants that the EPA, like, openly admits is in the water. Um, and then there's things that the government actively puts in there, like fluoride, which they just, for the first time in 50 years, reduced the allowable amount from 1.2 parts per million to um, 0.7 which to me, if you say, oh, this much is toxic, then let's just try and give them a little bit less. <laughs> like, to me, it's like, get rid right. of it. Like, what do you, you know? Why? So it, it's an interesting market and it's, an, it's a, a crazy problem because of how few people are aware of it. I was just in Florida and there was a, a, um, a radiological spill of 215 million gallons of uh, radiological waste basically went into the water supply wow. in Florida, and my buddy lived an hour and a half away, didn't even know about it. Really? Yeah, like they, it's, it's not, it's fine. There's, you know, there's publicity now with like lead, and Chromium Six has gotten some public, you know, with Aaron Brockovich movie back in right. two thousand and stuff. But uh, right. it's just a weird. It's something that you don't think about that much in the states because you assume. Well, we're in a first world country, our water's safe to drink. Right. You think, oh, it's like a problem in Africa and third world countries. And right. No, it's like there's plenty of problems here. Um, and it's all like slow degrading sort of stuff like neurotoxins and crap that, right. you know, the, the tough part about it and even on the selling side of it is there's not necessarily an immediate benefit of removing the contaminants. You don't, right. you know, obviously the water tastes better. So you don't wake up the next day and, and go, wow, I could, I could tell I didn't have any fluoride right. today. <laughs> I feel but more time, energized. I didn't drink prescription yeah. drugs in my water. Yeah. Yeah. But that stuff has an effect of a, you know. It's cumulative. Yeah. How did you discover the technology? <laughs> I mean, you do a really good job in the video explaining the, you know, the coconut carbon fibers. And how did you discover this technology? Um, well, so... The actual manufacturer, it's an 82-year-old <clears throat> guy who's been in the space since literally before I was born. Mm. Um, and he just, it's, it's an obsession. You know, he's 82, he looks like he's about 60 and acts like he's about 30. And it's, you know, it's, it's remarkable. And, uh, and so it's, it, he's just spent, it's, it's his life. It's, you know, he's spent literally basically his entire life committed to one goal and when you do that it's pretty amazing yeah. what can happen because it's very hard to get fluoride out of the water mm -hmm. um, like that alone is a difficult contaminant the radiological stuff is something nobody can really do um, so I'm not the scientist behind it I'm not the manufacturer I'm not an engineer I'm not a doctor um, I just found out about a, a bad problem and started making money from it and then realized you know that I actually cared and that there was a much bigger purpose behind it um, with you know, with giving clean water for every for every pitcher we sell. So it's you know the cool thing about water is it's object it's politically objective. There's no like oh you know I'm, I don't want to give to this charity because 
you know, they're helping with, you know, some whatever, you know, crap that everybody can fight against. Nobody's going to be like, well, you shouldn't give clean water to kids. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. That's not, it's not right. It's like, no, that's objective. Like we needed to live and, and it's a huge, it's a huge issue. How did you get interested in water and filters in general? So the, I mean, the real story is I was writing a sales letter for um for a water pitcher mm -hmm. and our sort of our big angle was the fluoride angle and to be honest at the time i didn't know that i believed fluoride was bad for you because the only friend who had told me about it was the guy who was like the tinfoil hat you know conspiracy <laughs> theorist friend who was like you know 9-11's a hoax and and you know fluoride's in the in the water to control the population's right. you know mind and dull their senses and all this stuff and I mean, I mean you say it out loud, it seems... Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, yeah. the reality is Florida's there because the people make a lot of money from it. Um, and and so, as I was doing the research, I knew the picture worked very well, but I didn't know how I felt about fluoride. And I won't write for something that I don't actually believe in. Right. So I was, thankfully, um, as I was going through it, I found this uh, paper written by a New Zealand dentist who actually brought fluoride to the United States. Hmm. Um he had been, they'd been doing studies in New Zealand. And then he's like, oh, this stuff's great. Let's go take it out of the States. Brought it over here. And then uh, a few years later, he realized that it was bad for people. There were hip fractures. There were bone density issues and uh, splotches on teeth. And there, were, there was no reduction in cavities. And, uh, and he became, he sort of, it's like a, if you have a, the story of the guy who, you know, made dolphins popular. And then, you know, people ended up, killing a bunch of dolphins and his whole purpose then became shit I feel bad I made dolphins popular in you know in movies and now suddenly everybody wants dolphins because of me and they're killing him he sort of felt the same way where yeah. it's like okay uh fluoride's actually really bad so it's like 40 page <laughs> look what I did yeah on this and tried to get the results back from the United States as to how it was affecting people and they wouldn't actually release any of the studies so right. it wasn't until a few years later through the Freedom of Information Act that he was actually able to get it so, and the results were the same. And it's been banned in like almost every country, like in the, you know, across like all these, you know, like Germany and Sweden and Norway and all these countries. And the one that's sort of funny to me is in, in Israel, it's banned. Like, you know, they've got plenty going on. And even in the middle of that, they're like, hey guys, one second, for, you know, let's, I know we would want, but let's, let's get rid of Florida. <laughs> that's my Russian Israeli guy. Right. right. Like, and, uh, but like, it's, so that was that was the turning point for me is when the original fluoride guy yeah was like oh shit this stuff's not good for you yeah. at all um and then there's different there's weird things you can get into with like the hippie side of things of you know the pineal it, it calcifies the pineal gland which can affect thyroid and pituitary you know and, and the third eye and you know enlightenment and and all that but the uh the truth is yeah i came from it i got into it from a marketing perspective yeah. um and then uh, ended up becoming passionate about it afterward. Yeah, it's I, interesting. One, it's probably I always drank a ton of water. So, like, since I was, I think it was my senior year of college, I started this uh, like diet eating plan, and uh, <clears throat> it was the first time I actually finally got like a proper six pack. And one of the biggest things was drinking an ounce of uh, of water per pound of body weight. Really, every day. Weigh, yeah. yeah, and I, you know, I weigh two hundred pounds. It's it's a lot of water. It's a lot the of water. Yeah. And, the, and the way it affects uh, fat loss and and different things is pretty remarkable. And that's one of the things I've never really gotten into on the sales side is like, just drink way more water. Like I guarantee yeah. you feel way seventy percent right. of your body's water. Like, kind of makes sense. <laughs> you should right. probably drink a good amount of it. And there are people in the world who don't drink water. Like they just drink soda right. and like things that have some, like they originally had some water. And so. I did drink a ton of water, so that was really, you know, I was passionate on that side. But it, it, it's not the traditional story. I don't yeah. have the, you know, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, and I realized like, I'm Aaron Brockovich's son water. or something. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I realized it was Brockovich. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's interesting because it probably helped you write that a more convincing sales letter because you were not a believer either. So you had to sell yourself first. Well, the first version I wrote yeah. was literally just. This is when I had my turning point, so I'm just going to use that argument. 
And Which is when you discovered the floor. Uh, that's when you discover the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, and then there's, you know, fluoride's interesting because some people still don't think it's bad and, and you know, whatever, uh, you know, even on the back of a toothpaste, can't you know, it says if you swallow any of this, cold poison control immediately. Mm-hmm. And the amount that's in that is less than, you know, a glass of water. Really? And so... Um, I didn't realize that. Yeah. But, then, but like, so I, I'm not a conspiracy person. I don't try to, you know, go hardcore on those type of angles. It's... You know the water's getting worse every day. Unfortunately, there's you know the Flint crisis with lead, and and then there's lead levels that are like reported way higher all across. Like they've been falsely reporting lead levels for years, and it's one of those things like you can't get upset because if I was if I was going to get emotionally attached to all the bad things in water, I'd be a very angry person. Like you you're literally looking at these right. studies, and you, you just sit there most of the time reading, shaking your head, like how is this possible that all yeah. of this stuff is is happening? But it's yeah. you know. I know in the kids' school, they have to bring a water bottle because they know there's lead in the water. So they yeah. can't even drink the drink out of the drinking fountains in the school because they know is, that. In, is that way At the live? public school, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great. So, yeah, I know Chicago's got some issues. In, in uh, California, they've got places with the same thing. Where they, and the, the sad thing is, especially with lead, it affects kids more so than adults um, and, and pets. Anything that's developing a brain, you know, has a developing brain mm-hmm. or... You know, the less you weigh, the more it affects you. And uh, it's, you know, with kids, there's developmental issues. There's, you know, IQ problems. There's all sorts of terrible things. And then they've, like, done studies on blood tests. They do blood tests of these kids, and they have high levels of lead in their blood. If you have not already bought a fixed water right now, like, I don't know what's wrong with you. (laughs) I don't feel I'm sitting here itching. That's not not my No, no, I want to get in the background because... What worked and didn't work when you first started selling the what? And this was not yours at the time. This was someone else's. That's how you got into it, right? Yeah. What yeah, worked so, and what so, didn't work when you were selling it for someone else? Um, well, <clears throat> sort of the fluoride was was what we sort of led with. Uh, led with as not not an intentional pun, <laughs> um, but uh, sort of hitting the fluoride angle and then good demonstrations. As well as uh, we have a good, there's a 3D animation um, that shows how the filter works. That was I think your is, sales copy on a web page, or was it through an email, or where was it? A VSL. It was a VSL. It was, it was a gotcha. VSL gotcha. Um, and we tested different versions. I mean, we're always we were always testing, and you know, we had hybrid versions of the page, and so now redoing it <coughs> for myself, the uh, yeah, sort of taking those same elements that have worked recreating them but then <clears throat> putting more my spin on it and yeah. uh, as well as the giving angle um, but I would say the lab tests are quite important that prove that it right. removes all the components it does um, yes yeah, <clears throat> talk about some of the components of the, the video sales letter and why you included them because you have the mixture of the demonstration the <clears throat> social proof and some of the actual research behind it and, and it's probably in a yeah. certain order for a certain reason yeah, sequencing is the most important yeah. part of copy. I think people mess up is sometimes you've got all the right copy and yeah. it's just in the order. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the other thing to realize, like, I mean, I'm going to be testing this this letter like crazy. I mean, even right now, there's a different version up than probably what you've seen, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> where I just basically move the demo to about a minute and twenty seconds in instead of waiting eight minutes to show the demo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and one of the big things I'll be testing is is more of a hybrid sort of long form copy with just the videos interspersed so that people can essentially, because the interesting thing is everybody's got a different reason they want clean water. And so, and they have different things that they want to be proven to them beforehand. So if somebody's already using a Brita, then they'll quickly see that it's inferior and, you know, realize that that's issue, but they could be using a pure, they could be using zero, they could be using a Berkey, um, <clears throat> there are so many different options. They could be spending a bunch of money on bottled water. Um, so sort of allowing people to choose. You have to eliminate those, to, all of them, right? You have to hit all the objections. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so it's interesting, you know, going through that because, I mean, I could create a two or three hour video on, on water and the problems. But obviously 
I'm not going to do that and it's not going to work. So it's not about how much information there is yeah. to use to sell. Because people are like, oh, you could use this as an angle, this as an angle, this as an angle. And I'm like, yeah, that's all fine and good. But I need to use the most important pieces in the shortest amount of time possible. Right. So that's sort of the goal um, <clears throat> is the demonstration. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, the toilet water, the original toilet water video did very well. And, you know, as we'll be recreating that and uh, a lot of different sort of <clears throat> My goal, sort of my my theme or motto with this company is, what am I willing to do that no one else is willing to do? So, a lot of things. I've already you know, seen a, a lot, lot of things. things. A lot of things. So, um, you have, know, usually what, have someone from Brita or whoever was it, owns that. Like, here, you get to drink your brand. I get to drink my brand. Well, and they, they have that. No, that's about you. There's, there's zero chance they were. They, right, they, for they, sure. They, they couldn't. They'd die. Um, <laughs> they'd die. They'd die. <laughs> like, I wouldn't do it again. That's zero chance. I mean, it doesn't claim to remove those things. It's just meant for odor and taste. Right. Uh, so, but that's sort of the the motto for me. And so it's it's how can I bring somebody in off of a sort of viral style video with you know just a good demonstration that right. draws their attention and then prove to them um, what it is. And so it's kind of the tough thing here is not wanting to use the traditional VSL like. Yeah, what is the traditional VSL? Yeah, tell me what's the traditional VSL. So PowerPoint slides, maybe you can't even pause the video, you can't fast forward, you can't rewind, um, <clears throat> and just a lot of open loops. And But they work. And if something sells a good product, then there's nothing wrong with using it. Yeah. Um, and there's still open loop. I'm always going to use open loops, and I'm going to um, use traditional sales, you know, uh, techniques that, that work. So and what's an example that... of an open loop in the video? Cause I know like you studied early on autoresponder madness, Andrew chaperones who, you know, he talks in depth about open loops. What's one that you used in the actual, uh, video? I'm, I'm, well, I mean, one of the best ones for like the toilet water is I'm in and I'm about to drink toilet water. <laughs> That's your first five seconds. And you go, right. oh, shit, I have to watch this. Um, right. right, right. And I don't, I'm, I'm not holding the picture at that point. So there's like, that video, there's a lot of important points in that where yeah. you can't give away. It's it's <clears throat> a lot of it's like joke structure. Um, the sequence is remarkably important. If the punchline's in the middle or at the beginning, then it's not going to get a laugh. You mm -hmm. have to have the setup, and then you have to wait for the the punchline you want to set is f at the absolute farthest end of the sentence, mm -hmm. so that there's the build up and then the release. So in a Video like that, it's the same thing. If I go, hey, I'm in, I'm about to drink toilet water using this picture, I'm going to filter it. You go, oh, okay. Still interesting, but not, I'm about to drink toilet water. Right. And you go, is he really about to do this? And then suddenly, you know, a minute and there's a picture there, and you're like, okay, but you're bought in at that point, and you've, you know, invested mm -hmm. some time. But an open loop is, people try and make it sound all fancy and sexy. All an open loop is, is asking a question and waiting to answer it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, that's, it's that simple. You're just saying he is or, or alluding to something that's going to happen and not giving the, yeah. them the payoff right now. Right. It's so, just curious. Yeah. So within the sequence of the VSL, um, is it what what would you say the sequence is? Like you mentioned demo, like you want to open well, so a loop we'll demo. We're going to test it. I mean, quite dramatically right now, there's two versions. One is basically the dangers of water. Um and like the main contaminants in it right. and then a uh and then basically goes into the demo and then the demo of me drinking the dirty water and then it's the 3d animation of how the filter works mm -hmm. and then it's um the lab test that prove that it works and then the close mm -hmm. uh so and then the other version is basically just a quick lead that's me saying you know would you drink this tap water would you drink this dirty water right. i bet you wouldn't um, but I'm about to, and then basically, you know, for every pitch we sell, we give six months of clean water to a kid in need, and then I'm about to drink dirty water, and then it's the demo, 3D animation, um, yeah. and then the... Uh, you, um, you have some, at the end, you have some, you know, the clothes, you have a guarantee in there, and you have the, obviously, we're actually donating, I mean, what you say, what, what um, for every pitcher, it's like six pitcher. months? Yeah, six months of clean water. For... Uh, for a kid for a kid in need so oh. whether it's in <clears throat> africa or south america um or downtown basically. chicago yeah downtown chicago right. lots of things people are so quick to go outside of the country to help people and it's uh there's plenty of problems here 
you know, yeah, that forget about. Um, because you know, I mean, you've done this before for when you were writing the copy for that other company, so you know, I mean, you're going to test a few things, but you have an idea yeah, what worked before. So, we're starting with what, what we know has worked before, yeah, right? Um, because silly not to, right? But I, I mean, my actual my plan is to actually do more of a documentary style VSL, so one of the sort of mental <clears throat> tweaks that I've made is not writing VSLs anymore, but basically trying to write a TV show. So think of it as like, so why is it that when we watch Netflix, it's harder to turn off than it is to just keep watching. Right. Yet the VSL or something, yeah. you know, people are more likely to turn it off than to keep watching. So how do you sort of create that level of entertainment yeah. while educating that people want to watch yeah. um, and continue to watch? And and have it just be more, be less insulting of people's intelligence, and have real conversations. And you know, I don't script a lot of my stuff when I'm on camera. Really, and okay. so I do a lot of it just off the cuff. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, the the evolved version of this VSL will be interviews and demonstrations. <clears throat> but the whole point of this one was let's get the first version up. It's not going to be good. It's not not it like now I watch it and I'm like this is awful. I can't stand it. It's you know, it's total garbage. But that's fine for the first version. Get some conversions, get some data, right. and improve. Yeah. But if I sit back and try and make the perfect version yeah. first time, it's gonna take forever. Yeah. Um so you know, and then the other thing is is then you get into this sort of debate of do you keep on like once something's converting well, you can go for more incremental gains in conversions on that one sales letter um, or, or revamp the whole thing products well no it's I mean at that point you've got something that works you know if you add 10 percent <clears throat> conversions you may add another you know five hundred thousand dollars or something for the year but I'd rather introduce a new product that can do another five million you know so we've got the water bottles then we've got the shower heads and then we have some other products mm. that are going to be really cool actually that oh, really? will be rolling the problem is Focusing on, like for me, I, I think big. Like that's when I have fun. I hate thinking small. I hate having to like focus on just this one little thing, like this one right. funnel. But until it's really converting how we want it to, right? it's where you spend your time. Right. And then you to get into the fun stuff and adding in the products and other stuff. But it's, you know, it's sort of uh, what, you know, it's like building the first thing going, oh, okay, that's okay. So let's go on to the next thing. <coughs> Want to get it working well, and then it gets really fun yeah. with the viral videos and the just introducing the other products and stuff and having these different lines. And because I can create videos fast, it allows us a lot of speed um, to market where we don't have to take I don't have to take six weeks to write a sales letter like most people. Yeah, I can you know, in two or three days have a VSL done, and so that's you know it's focusing on this one sort of granular step in the scale and scope of what we're going to be doing yeah. and in that churning until, you know, and then which, you know, within the next week or two, we should be there. And then it's okay. Let's move on to, um, adding in these the other product, these, uh, you know, product or, or uh, you know, profit streams yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. So I know Ian, before we started, we were saying, we were talking about, I want to talk about the emotional mental exercise and sometimes it takes longer than we wanted to but go back to when you were doing the other filter because there's a lot of moving parts a lot of components to make a successful business right so what were the what made that particular you know with your copy and the vsl what were all the components that were involved that made that a success and then i want to talk about what you're doing uh currently yeah i mean the uh I mean, originally, so I wrote it with another copywriter, yeah. um, and uh, and it was sort of, I'd say, what made it work really because well, we did, you know, fifteen million, uh, and Amazing. then and in about a year, and then we had fifteen million in rebuilds scheduled, um, and the op side is basically what ended up, um, you know, messing up that company, and so as well as customer service. So for me, getting mm. into this new one, first thing I did was bring on a partner who is in ops, finance. You so know. what do you mean by ops? So like the actual, <clears throat> you know, one of the biggest problems with a lot of like yeah. internet marketers transitioning into uh, physical product space yeah. is we're used to info product mergers. Um, you know, right. you sell an ebook for 
forty-seven dollars, you make forty-five. You know, and, and maybe you know you pay out affiliates, whatever. You sell a picture for seventy dollars, and you know you make twenty-five. Or you know you've you've got you know you've, you've got your shipping the, yeah. costs. You have your fulfillment center. You have all of these factors that you originally didn't get into business thinking about. Right. Um, and so there's a real operations like having product on hand, shipping costs, handling, getting things out to customers. A lot of hard costs, yeah. Having like a good, like a legit customer service center, um, treating people like humans, right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I think part of what made it work so well is first off, we were, basically, we were the first really to take direct response and apply it to the water market yeah. um, in this way. And now there's been you know a few different people who've basically copied the offer pretty much straight up. Your um, offer. Yeah. And so now there's other competitors. What do you do about that? I mean, how does that... Nothing, really? That's what happens. Yeah. I mean, we've had people, like even friends, who are, like literally steal an entire word-for-word -word VSL. And it's like, dude, what are you doing? And he's like, we just wanted to test to see if there was some... That, like, no, that's not how it works. But people will take the same hook. They take your hook that originally works. Right. And then they apply it to their own thing. The good thing about this one is our filter is genuinely just better right. than the rest. So we do get to compete on that side of it is better. Right. Um, and so that's a nice advantage. Mm -hmm. But as far as the first time around, you know, there's partially that <clears throat> we did do a free trial. Um, of basically got to pitch it for free plus shipping, yeah. which for a $70 picture that's genuinely high quality was a very good deal. And then they were put into a continuity of subscriptions. Because they have to rebuy the <laughs> filters and everything too, right? right? Yeah. The people, and I'll tell you one thing you learn yeah. and all this, how dumb people are. I mean, my God, people are like, do I have to replace the filter ever? Like it's, it is a filter. It lasts four times longer than a Brita or a Pure, any of those, which last for 40 gallons, which is for most families a month, maybe. Like it's really, it really should be every, that should really only last you 15 days. You should be drinking more water, using it for your vegetables, right, right. using it for cooking, for your pets, all that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, you filters need to be replaced. Yeah. That's how they work. You want to continue to get the benefits of using it. You need to replace. But with yeah. something like Brita, most people realize they need to change the filter. Realize they've been using it way too long. Say, oh, I should change the filter, and then they don't. And they'll have a Brita in their fridge for a year yeah. and a half. It's doing nothing. Yeah. It's, it's a glorified cold water container. So it's better, basically. <laughs> it's more beneficial for them to be on a rebuild to get auto shipped the filters because yeah, then they'll actually a, do it. Yeah, we have a genuine like discount for the. Uh, for the subscription that that we don't make a lot of profit on, but it's sort of as a reward yeah. for taking action. Like at, on the first upsell that we yeah. have is is a subscription for that. And the reality is, like even when we were when I was in the office where we would have you know thousands of filters in the warehouse, like ten feet from my desk, I would forget to get a new filter. Right. Like oh, I need to get one tomorrow, and then you forget. And you get, so I was like, you guys, like let's just put me on auto ship so that I don't forget. Right. And I just have Hand. You could have easily just grabbed it and taken it yeah. home. But, <laughs> but we forget. It's, you know, it's human nature. So the free plus shipping, you were saying. Yeah, so that worked well. Um, but it was also, it was a risky play. It's risky, uh, yeah. We, we waited really about seven months to actually, um, to, to get profit. We were break even around, tried to be break even around 30 days. Mm. Uh, but, but we also did well with the full price offer on the front. I think it's, it's a combination of, um, you know, educating people yeah. on the problems and then proving that we actually solve it. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it's one of the things is it's a, you know, it's a pretty big, pretty big market. You know, it's, it's people who drink water. So it's, it's a reason. <laughs> pretty big market. Yeah. You um, could say so. And that's, what's like, that's why, <clears throat> you know, like teaching email copy, teaching how to write VSLs, you know, doing that stuff is fun, but, it's once you've had a taste of you know a big market like this, it's right. it's pretty tough to not want to to stay in something this broad because your scale and you know your capacity mass to, market yeah you know, go huge. So fifteen million in a year that's remarkable. How are people finding that? I mean, that was just a lot of we had affiliates. We had uh, mm -hmm. we did email drops, so buying um, email drops in to other people's lists. We were running Google Display Network. <clears throat> we actually didn't do Facebook ads at the time, uh, which we're actually starting out with now. Um, yeah. 
we uh, the guy who owned, who was the owner is a very good media buyer. Yeah. Uh, so he was buying uh, media on primarily Google Display, and then uh, but email. I mean, email drops work remarkably well. We yeah. were doing all the drops, um, and then I mean, it was it was converting really well. And we had a few other offers. I mean, like our offers always converted, and people actually made money when they sent for them. Yeah. So you know, affiliates wanted to send it, and then it's so broad. That a lot of people started to put it into their autoresponder. So you know, you get a, a company who's, you know, selling a lot of ebooks every day on health. It's natural to yeah and it, anything on health. Teaching. It's really, I mean, it's just so it's so broad that like one of the moving forward, one of the big tactics I'll be using is like really hyper focused leads for the video for the videos and hitting segments, you know, much smaller segments of the market, like having paleo water. You know, like right. people don't, you know, all the paleo people are Cross so it, concerned with all their yeah. food and, and all their, uh, <clears throat> you know, all the contaminants and that. And they don't think about the fact that they're drinking contaminated water every day. And even things like bottled water and the other filters just don't, you know, yeah. actually solve the issue. So it's, then you start to get into sort of more yeah. hyper-focused and then, you know, your conversions can go dramatically up. But it's, it's yeah. always a fine balance of, do I want to cast a really wide net? And get less conversions, but have more people coming in in general. As yeah. long as I can make it work monetarily, yeah. uh, or do you start hyper focused, get it to convert within those spaces, and then move out from there? Yeah. And Ian, if this is talking about any trade secrets that you cannot talk about, feel free to not answer this question at all. But um, with the Google Display Network, what was working with what would show up, and where would it take people through that was converting? Like once they click um, on that ad. So I'm not the traffic guy, but yeah. essentially the main <clears throat> ad that worked well was a Brita cannot filter this. Mm -hmm. Weird device removes 99.9% .9 of contaminants. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then a don't uh, don't take another sip of water until you see this video. Yeah. Um, they would take the, them to the, the page with the video the on it. Page. I got yeah. you. And then we would retarget, you know. Yeah. Like. The pixel yeah. shows up, somebody who shows up, and then we would retarget. Um, and that was actually the only stuff we got to really work well on YouTube was the toilet water video um, was retargeting well. So people would, you know, have come to our page and then they'd be on YouTube and then suddenly they'd see, hey, I'm about to drink toilet water. Right. And, uh, and then boom. So obviously you're a student of direct response, right? I'm curious of who you studied to come up with this video. I mean, it's a combination of people. I know you've mentioned the video sales letter. So I don't know, John Benson stuff and Andre's chaperone stuff. Do you study I've, any I've of the old Drew school infomercials or? Yeah, the main thing I actually do, <clears throat> well, I don't know if you know Ron Lynch, but Ron Lynch is like, I mean, my, I call him like my business dad, um, but he's also <clears throat> one of my close friends and he did all the infomercials for, you know, GoPro and, uh, Foreman Grill and OxyClean and all sorts of shit. And mm -hmm. so he's been a big mentor for me. Yeah. And that's really where I got the idea of switching from VSLs to shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what advice has he given you? Man, I couldn't even pretend to condense down. <laughs> it's his, like every time you talk to him, it's just like a fucking hole in your brain. And then you have to pick up the pieces. Um, I was just on the phone with him right before we, we talked actually. And it's just, it's a constant, just like a lot of his stuff. So actually the way he thinks is similar to, to how I think, I always just think of the opposite. So the, to sort of answer that question though, yeah. the main thing I did <clears throat> was hand copy a lot of sales letters. Hmm. So I went through copy hour, um, which is now one of my business partners, Derek Johansson. Um, basically you handwrite sales letters yeah. for an hour a day um, or 30 minutes, <clears throat> whatever. I still hand copy. Um, occasionally nowadays really? oh, wow. and uh, a lot of it's just to get ideas um, yeah. but it just ingrains the principles in your subconscious yeah. um, so I, I hand wrote a lot of copy and then I actually just wrote copy one of the biggest things people don't do is actually write and, and try stuff right. um, so hand copying was huge for me but one of the biggest things is to go to the older ads um, that work because a lot of those went to cold traffic if you go to a lot of ads <clears throat> or a lot of VSLs that are working these days they're getting sent out by affiliates from a warm list to that VSL, which right. doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work to cold traffic. Right. My goal is always to be able to take somebody from cold traffic and convert them into a buyer, not having to rely on other people's lists and warm leads 
um, to do that. So uh, that's big. But the one the one big thing to realize these days, all the stuff that like Eugene Schwartz, like his stuff's been really beneficial to me. I, I followed John Carlton's stuff, Gary Halbert, um, but they could make a lot of claims that we just simply can't make anymore and that I don't want to make anyway. But like they, they could say pretty much anything they wanted originally. You could, you know, you would, you could just go this pill, you know, burns fat. And that was the extent of what they had to say to sell something. Right. And then as the market gets smarter and smarter, uh, actually the best, the best copy book in my opinion is great leads by Michael Masterson, who uh, mm. is one of the uh, owners of Agora. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So that's that's a good one for the direct response side, um, but my <clears throat> really my goal these days is to do things as differently as I can. You know, it's, it's better to be different than it is to be better, and it's mainly a lot easier. Um, I don't want to be the next, you know, Gary Benzavanga, Gary Halbert. I'd rather be the best version of me right. doing things my way. Right. Uh, so that's why my goal is to be on camera right. and have a real face behind a company, yeah. uh, be transparent. We're entering, you know, the era of transparency marketing where <clears throat> people are aware of the fact that they're being sold. And when you pretend like they're not, they feel, you know, they're upset. And so it's it's about that yeah. straightforward, here's the deal, here's the truth, and you know, sort of here's what I do. Right. And uh and so so that's really for me my goal is to sort of <coughs> attempt to break a lot of the rules. But there's a much bigger risk in doing that. But there's yeah. also much bigger payoff if you yeah. if you make it work. Yeah, my ask because when I watch your video, it makes me think of the Billy Mays OxyClean infomercial. You know, I've went through. I watched that. Uh, they had a show. <coughs> I think it was called Pitchman. It was Billy Mays and uh, Anthony Sullivan before Billy died. Right. And it's really fascinating to watch because they think of things like I, I think of demonstrations, um, sort of like a, a magician. <clears throat> I've never been particularly into magic. I am, but yeah, I love it. But yeah. When you when well, I do enjoy watching, like you know, David Blaine. And actually, the person I've been watching a ton of stuff now is um, Darren Brown. Yeah, amazing. It is like, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. But one of my favorite things about Darren Brown and David Blaine, primarily, really Darren Brown, because very transparent and <clears throat> and if if he's doing a trick, he'll end up telling you afterward that was a trick. But whenever he does something, he, you know, good copy and good selling is essentially just. The difference between a really good salesperson and an okay one is the great salesperson um, basically eliminates objections before or as they arise. Yeah, yeah. And they think of everything in advance. Yeah. So with something like, <clears throat> you know, with magic tricks, people, I, I'm very naive naturally, so I have to force myself to be skeptical. Right. And think, how can I convince someone? How can I, you know, everybody's got that one friend who's just like, well, that's not real. That's bullshit. That's not real. And it's like, how do I convince that guy? Um, right. And so there's a point where actually David Blaine's with Ricky Gervais on. Uh, this is amazing. And he's, yeah. and he's Tell putting, the, you know, he's got this steel rod, and he's putting it through his arm, and he's going. It's great. Looks real, doesn't it, Ricky? Doesn't it look so real? He's like, what are you talking about, David? He goes, you're putting a, you're putting a needle through your arm. What are you doing? What are you on about? And he goes, and he keeps putting it through. He goes, it looks so real, doesn't it? He goes, that's what are you what are you doing? And he finally goes through, and he goes. You're not. That's not a trick because you're just sticking a fucking needle through you, <laughs> and and so it's at that point where when do you get somebody to go from this is a trick to oh no he's just putting a needle through his arm right. or he's just drinking dirty water, so when you look at like Billy Mays and so Darren Brown does a great job of it too. He will set things up and he goes through every objection in detail yeah. to make sure you know this is real. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and so with um, with Billy Mays, like. They go with the most dramatic demonstration possible, and there's one that's really <clears throat> that's really good. Is he takes this? Uh, it's for it's for shoes. It's like insole, you know, soles for your shoes, like gel inserts. And they end up. Uh, he takes he wraps it over his hand and then smashes his hand with a hammer. Mm. And so and like that's not what you think. You're like They're for shoes. Why would you do that? But it shows how much shock they absorb. But the one thing that most people most people would have stopped at that, and then you could think, oh, it's a fake hammer. But what he does is he smashes his hand, and then they have a brick sitting right there. And then he smashes the brick. Yeah. Now you know the hammer is real. Right. But if you leave that out, there's doubt. Yeah. So you do a really good job of this in the video because you 
a good magician does exactly what you're saying because you will say, well, if you think it's fit, you'll like tilt the picture so that people see inside of it. Like, you know, you, this is a real, you know, there's nothing inside this, you know, there's no tricks and it's kind of like a magician rolling up their sleeve, like saying there's nothing here type of thing. That's, you, it's really the way you have to think of it. Cause yeah. it's like those little things like, and with, with the original toilet water video and with that demo, when, I'm, when my video guy <clears throat> put it together the first time, he starts zooming in on certain things, zooming out, and he took the picture out of the shot at one point. I'm like, you cannot do that. Mm. You, the picture can never leave the frame. Right. Not even for half a second. Yeah. And because then it could be fake. So I'm always thinking, what seems, what could be fake about this? Yeah. Somebody actually put a comment on there and he's like, oh, there's no filter in the Brita. And I'm like, the, you can see the filter. It's there that you, if there was no filter, it would have just gone straight through. Right. That's not a possibility, but there's a, there's a lot of skeptics and people who are just haters in general, and that's fine. If I read comments from stupid people yeah. who are angry and, un, and uneducated on the subject, yeah. then I'm just going to hate myself because you can get 95 good comments, one right. bad one, and all you do all day is think about the bad one. Right. So yeah. you just have to you know, get yeah. rid of it and, and do your best to, to convince people who aren't just absolutely out of their mind. Yeah. That makes me think of like the the old school like Joe Sugarman Blue Blockers uh, infomercials where he gets the people's reaction you know the gets the people's reaction right then and there. That's so I mean so here's here's the thing about all this like you'll and this, what'll be cool is seeing the evolution of, of all of our videos and yeah. <clears throat> and how we do things, um, but there's so many cool things to do like that is something uh, that I actually have planned is to go and just do water test taste test. Because reaction, some of the best VSLs out there. There's one Beverly Hills MD. It's a skin one, mm -hmm. and the video starts out, and it's just like blotchy skin, and like it's people. I think they they go onto a beach, and then they put this sort of like UV thing over them, and it shows all of the dark spots, mm. and these people, <gasps> and right, you keep seeing right. this reaction, and then <clears throat> yeah. I had a friend who replicated it for the golf market. And that's one of the best things to do. So many people steal from within their market. Right. Go to another market, right. see what's working there, and then use that formula for your own. Right. And you're not stealing. You're just using something that works and applying it to what you're doing now. Yeah. And so with the <clears throat> the Beverly Hills MD one, um, I had a friend in the golf market who took the same structure for a physical golf product. And he had like Jack Nicholas in the video and stuff. And, you know, it's, there's a lot of great uh, elements to it. But... They have the people just swinging their golf club, and like, and just going, whoo, right. whoo, this comes this reaction, and it's and you can tell when a reaction is real. You yeah. can tell like the great thing about transparency and authenticity is it can't be faked. Right. And you know, people try, and they can get away with it to a certain point, but as things evolve more and more, it's going to be yeah. you know, harder and harder to do. Yeah. But it's that's a really good way to sell is yeah. just to because people you there's some sort of selling advice out there that's provide results in advance. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's actually bullshit because nobody in the world has ever bought a result. People buy a feeling. Right, right. A result is some, is the tangible piece. But what they buy, if I say, um, you know, the result is you'll have a million dollars in the bank. Well, to one person that can be absolute total freedom and to another person that can be the least amount of money they've ever had in their bank account and a huge amount of stress. Right. That's the result. It's yeah. independent of the feeling. What they're buying is freedom. Yeah, they're buying, and so you create the feelings in advance. Of it. They're buying peace of mind. They're you know they're not buying a result. So it's it's like it's looking at things from right. when you do those reactions. You're giving somebody the feeling yeah. in advance before they actually get it for themselves. Right. Yeah, it's like if right. you showed a video and like you're targeting moms. If you show the kids like having. Like what the reactions would be to not having this filter. Like every mom in America would obviously buy it because they don't want their kids to have this. Like they're precious. And that's, you know, that's that's really a tough line to walk because um, you know. So one of my big things is you know combining comedy with selling is is really what I've um, yeah have, have become sort of known for or good at. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's difficult, but this is one market where it's really difficult. And so it's kind of funny that I took on the market that's probably one of the most challenging. Why do you to, say it's most difficult? Because the problems are very serious. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> your kid drinking lead isn't funny. Right. There's nothing inherently funny about that. I have found ways to sort of lighten the mood because the other <clears throat> sort of motto of the company has been 
we take the problem seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Right. And I don't want to show you videos of three-legged dogs with Sarah McLaughlin music playing in the background. <laughs> You know, I don't want to. I don't want to depress you. I don't want you to watch you know, this again. Like people may pull out their wallets at times, but I'd rather do it in a way that's less depressing. Right, right. So for me, it's more like we had, the showerhead video did really well. And the, <clears throat> I I can't wait to get another showerhead video. What was the like, showerhead video? I didn't even see it. Find that one. Showerhead video. I know it's it's not up yet. For oh, anyone. okay. Um, <clears throat> it will be soon because the, the showerhead video is uh, the showerhead is my favorite, and the showerhead video. Was my favorite. Mm. Um, I thought I scoured sense. the internet what finding is, all your videos, I know, but I couldn't. A lot of these have gone down now okay. um, from before. But <clears throat> actually, the, probably the greatest compliment of copywriting I ever received was uh, David Deutsch, who's a legend and just a funny, yeah. funny, funny guy. He uh, he emails me and he's like, "Hey man, I really enjoyed your copy about the shad thing. I clicked through it. I'm like, damn, David Deutsch said something, you know." And then he's like, uh, "But I'm trying to buy it right now, and the checkout page isn't working." And I'm like, like it's one thing to say to people, man, that's really good copy. Right. It's to be like, I bought that shit. I pulled out my credit card yeah, like for I, sure. So, but what's interesting about that is we actually got it to convert to cold traffic on like a seven minute VSL, which is very like that short of a um, thing. But there were really good demos in it. And I genuinely, like that is my favorite product. Like I would say the water bottle is second because you can take it anywhere and like, is that like what you, you have there? What you, that's what I, yeah, that's what this so is. So what here. is this? So yeah. There'll be a sleeve on it um, that'll say fixed water, but we're getting this shipped in. Um, the bottle, the bottle literally, you can, I could go to a stagnant lake and drink out of it. I really? could drink anyway. So I've, I've taken this to South America and the fun, you know, you'll end up saving a few hundred bucks because you don't like, people don't realize how much you spend on bottled water, especially when you travel. And in those, and it's just peace of mind. Like yeah. you just don't have to worry about so it. So how does it work with that? Like you just pour it in the, the top? So this one, it's, so the other one's gravity fed. So essentially the water comes in through the top and then gravity pulls it down. So it takes longer to, yeah. to get the water through. This is either, so the, with the plastic one, you can squeeze and that amount of force runs the, you know, you should see the water coming out, mm -hmm. um, runs the, uh, the water through the straw. And so it filters instantly. It's in real time. Mm. Um, and then you can also suck through it. I always hate talking about that. It's, it's sucking and squeezing. It's basically, you, you know, if you suck through it, it, it comes out. And if you squeeze it, it, it comes out as well. Um, but it's, it's just using the force. It's about just a light squeeze, about six to seven pounds of force pushes the water through mm. uh, the filter. So it runs through. Uh, I mean, it's... The, the water bottle is pretty remarkable. Yeah. You can see the filter in here. That's why I've been having the, the sleeve off. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I could totally <laughs> see you going up to a frat house, knocking on the door and just saying, I'm going to drink your toilet water. And like going back and having all these fraternity people just going crazy. When you <laughs> no way, bro. No way, bro. Dude, look, there's a pube on the ground. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Maybe I should. I mean, if I'm smart, I should go to the sorority after, even if I don't drink any water, just to just to go to the sorority <laughs> house. Exactly. Uh, that's well, actually, so sort of an interesting piece of. Um, I can go back to the shower head in a sec, but yeah. the reason I'm going to be drinking the toilet water at uh, UT um, is I was reading. Uh, I was actually reading the Ryan Holiday's "Trust Me, I'm Lying," and uh, it gave me the idea. Like I, I'm not a fan of lying in general and you know and, and all the falseness but there are interesting <clears throat> sort of ways he did things and, and one thing he talked about is getting local coverage first mm -hmm. and how sort of the little blogs are where the big blogs pull their information from and so I mean the toilet water went viral on its own before but actually putting strategy behind it so the idea is get it to go viral locally so amongst the UT campus um, They'll share it with their parents, then everybody starts sharing, and then you know you get local news to pick it up, and then from there move to national. Right. So taking, I mean, there's seventy thousand people who go to UT, right? So that alone yeah. is a, but then not the typical market. It's a higher end filter. You know, they're college kids, but there are plenty of you know basic bitches who would love some some clean water to go along with their core power yoga and and some delicious gluten free pudding. Um, <laughs> Which I make fun of, but I didn't terrible. know there was gluten free pudding. But yeah. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if you need it to be gluten free pudding. It be gluten free muffins because I love my carbs. Okay. Um, but uh, you know that's 
that's sort of a that's that's going to be the strategy with that, and then <clears throat> it's going to be a series basically of Ian drinks it, you know, right? Go to that was the original idea um, back in the day, but the uh, we had we were actually selling through a third party before, and they were like, oh, take down the toilet. What a video! We're afraid people going to. It's like this thing's we were getting like eighty sales a day just from that to start. Yeah. <laughs> so the. Um, Basically, you don't have to you know, answer to anyone now with with fixed. Water. No, and that's what's so yeah. fun is you know I get to do it how I want to do it, and uh, <clears throat> and sort of within that too, trying to find the right level of polarization where it's like I'm not good at being 98 percent myself. Like I'm either me or I'm not me. Right. Um. So it's it's tempting to try to appeal to everyone because it's such a broad market and everybody needs it, and I don't want to be abrasive to people who still need clean water. <laughs> But, but you're going to be abrasive anyway. Time, people either yeah. like me or they don't. You know, right. it's sort of how things. But with that, I haven't used that as much, and I think that's actually not a good thing. I think I need to be more, because like one of the biggest things you know, we talk about is just the benefit of drinking a ton of water. Like right. your body is basically water. Drink a ton of it. That's it's not that complex right. of an idea. People are like my skin's bad. I'm like, how much water do you drink? Well, pretty not very much. Guess what? Sixty four percent of your skin cell is water. It would make sense that if you hydrate it, you're probably going to feel better. Yeah. Well, you get so hungry all the time. Do you drink any water? No. Well, it'll fill you up. Yeah. Like there's, there's insulatory thermostat, parts of like of regulating your metabolism. So it's sort of shit where I'd like, this is when I actually being, you know, now you can see I'm getting like passionate. Get angry. It annoys me. Like people are just this, but it's not their fault. They're uneducated about these yeah. topics. It's not something... That people talk about when you think about getting healthy, somebody says, oh, I need to start exercising and I need to start eating healthy. And then they normally think that means whole grains and crap like that. But, you know, but nobody says, oh, I need to get healthy. I should probably up my water intake right. and like really focus on hydrating myself. But the problem is then they do it and then they're just going to be taking in a ton of toxins and, and crap that's actually going to end up aging faster yeah. and make you feel worse. But, um, you know, so... To, to the shower head. You were, the shower yeah. head. The reason, yeah. reason I love the shower head is uh, I feel like I'm just like, this is like a constant pitch. I thought we were going to talk about no, I, joke around and stuff. Now I seem like I'm the, I'm the guy who's just selling. No, I mean, I would like to hear your mind at work on how you sell. It's not so much selling, but it's your thought process on the sequencing, why you're saying certain things. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. I don't take it as selling, but um, of kind of your thought process behind this stuff, you know? Yeah. So I'll say the shower head, I think, was the most... Because this <clears> is <throat> the thing, Ian, you know, people are going to have all sorts of products, but they can use these concepts, whatever their product is, if it's info product or physical product, they can use this exact stuff, just like you're saying, for their own market. Well, I, I've said know? the words tactics and techniques a couple of times here, which is very unusual for me. I focus on principles and strategies. Mm -hmm. Because those dictate whether or not tactics and techniques work. When I I, I basically view everything through the lens of how I learned um, self defense and like violence training. The guy who taught me, it was all principal strategy dictates tactical technique. The idea of blocking stuff like that, like the idea of a, a technique, a technique works in a specific situation. That is what it's definitely you know that's how right. it works. Right. The principle is universal. The strategy is universal. Right. Right. So. <laughs> and that's again why it's important to go to lateral markets that aren't related and use concepts that work there and then bring them back to your industry. Yeah. And so what I did um with the share head is I think I finally sort of hit the groove of I combined a little bit of comedy basically. I opened up in the warehouse and I'm like, I'm here in the warehouse right now cuz I want to show you my favorite product. And part of, I couldn't say this if it wasn't, right? <clears throat> I want to show you my favorite product. Um and I want to shower you in savings. And I'm like, and terrible jokes. And it's, it is a terrible joke, but like then by calling out that it's a bad joke, it's, and then I use some like proven sales principles of presupposition where I basically said, <coughs> if you get one shower head, you know, you'll save, you know, it's like $11. Um, actually, it's more than that for this. Why is uh, that? And, and when you get two, you'll save $33. Okay. Um, and so by saying that a couple of times, I tested this across a few different products. Yeah. We ended up getting a 90 to 95% take rate on the two shower head option or really? the two water bottle option. Compared, like we would have been happy with 50. Um, but when you say if and when, when presupposes that somebody's already going to take that action. Um, and that was part of why we actually ah. named it. That's why we named it fixed water instead of fixed water. 
wall is broken, we fixed it. We presuppose mm. that we've already fixed it. Mm. Uh, and like, I'm not like a crazy NLP guy. Like some people get way too into it and they're like all oh, this subliminal message. I'll say the best NLP guy I've ever seen is Darren Brown and watching his shit is remarkable. Yeah. But like the amount of time that in preparation that goes into the, how good he is at it is ridiculous. Um, but those little things like that, that piece of NLP does work. I've yeah. proven it because I, I was skeptical. I'm like, that. I'm like, hey, this shit's, it's not going to work. And then it was like, I tested it this time again and again, and it was crazy. So, so I said you that, use when instead of if. Yes. For that. Yeah. That's amazing. But use if for the one bottle option, um, when for the two bottle option, because you want them to obviously take that. That's a mic drop. Ian, mic drop that. Yeah. That's it's that's, and it's proven. I've yeah. had people use the same email sequence that I originally wrote for that wow. and gotten really ridiculous results, um, to their list. So, then at that, after that, <clears throat> I was at my house. I'm like, hey, I'm at my house, and I just wanted to talk to you about water. Basically, you know, about, or about the what's in your your shower had water. You right. know, most people, if you're thinking about the you know the quality of the water you drink, nobody thinks about really the quality of the water uh, that's going on to your body. And so, um, at that point, I was I went up to my bathroom and I basically I'm like, here, I'm here in my bathroom right now. This is where the magic happens. I'm like, I don't know why I said that. It's not. <laughs> I actually have something serious to tell you. Right. Um, I'm surprised at how much I remember this right now. This is good for when I redo it. Yeah. But I basically had a bottle of bleach. And so this is where I was able to combine, I think, comedy in a way that right. it's levity, right? It's allowing lightness about something that's very dark or serious. And I was basically, I said, would you pour this on yourself or on your child? I hope not. Like, you're not going to pour bleach on. But every time you step into a shower, that's essentially what you're doing. Um, basically, the chlorine, because chlorine actually absorbs faster uh, eight times faster through your skin and lungs than mm. when you actually drink it right. and chlorine is objectively a poison it's put in your water for good reason it cleans out your pipes rust sediment rat shit stuff like that right but it shouldn't be hitting your skin um and so when i found out about this when i was doing the research originally um i i immediately got a filter um, and actually it's less of an issue with cold water so if you use cold water you won't have the same um, amount yeah. of uh, absorption through your yeah. skin. And Most people your, don't, your, This is a big part, so the yeah. steam. Um, but so what I didn't realize is <clears throat> I'd had an itchy scalp um, and, like, dry dry scalp and, like, itchy head, like, forever. And, you know, I put on a hat every two minutes, stretch my head. When I go to the gym, immediately start sweating. My head itches. And uh, and I, I just assumed that was what it was. But it was right. it ended up being chlorine. So within, like, three or four days, hmm. gone. Wow. And if my friends of my buddies, like I've had dry skin on my legs my whole life, three or four days, gone. So right. I don't make claims like these. Right. Videos, but like the reality is that's what I experienced. And the other thing is for um, for allergies, as when like people are, you're literally breathing in poison. When you're sitting in a, in a hot shower with all the steam coming up, you're just, it's basically like getting into a gas chamber. Like that's kind that, yeah. of like voluntarily going into a gas chamber. And so, but I, you know, I talk about if you look at a swimmer, who goes into a pool, you probably think, okay, but I swim in a pool with chlorine. Look at a water polo player, a swimmer, it looks like their hair's been set on fire and somebody torched their skin. You know, like they they don't look healthy. You know, they're, they're, it's all, you know, bleach one and all this crap. And, and so, but one of the best things in that one is the demo that I used. Basically, I put my hand in uh, I had two glasses of water. I put my hands in either one, and then I pour these chlorine drops in, which show chlorine. And during the time that you see all this chlorine in the in the other one, after I take my hand out, I pour in the drops again, and all the chlorine's gone. Really? Is it absorbed through? That's just crazy. It's my skin. It's one of those things that you watch and you go, ooh. And that's my goal. My goal with demos and with <clears throat> that's amazing. That, you know, when I tell somebody mm. I'm going to go drink toilet water at UT, my goal is like I know I'm doing the right thing. When I say dorm toilet, and somebody goes, oh, that's that's what worthy. I'm, yeah. it's a bad demonstration. It's not, you know, limp, flaccid demonstration. <laughs> and and so, you know, that's but with so that that demo though is really strong. And then basically took the shower head and filled a glass of water from each, and then put the drops in, and you can see it turn yellow. Yeah, from the chlorine, and then you can see the other one not, and it's. It's just pretty undeniable proof, yeah. and it's not boring. And it's something people actually, like, genuinely don't think about. This is the one thing where, like, whenever I talk to people about the shower head, 
in public and I would like, so the, like, I try not to, I'm not like, you know, shoving drinking clean water down people's throats, no pun intended, right. but, uh, you know, but the Shahid stuff, I'm like, yeah, that's, and they're like, what? That's crazy. Yeah. Where do I get one? Like, where do I get, and so for me, actually, um, in the transition, I didn't have a filter for a little bit and I hate it now. I'll literally take like a two minute cold shower is the only thing I'll do. But when I would travel, yeah. Um, I would forget sometimes and I'd wash my hair with hot water again. Right. 15 minutes later, it's yeah. itching. So I, it's, it's, uh, you know, that's, that's sort of remind me, you know, I have, um, a really good introduction for you of someone with like a completely different product, but very similar as far as the audience goes. So I'm writing that down. Um, awesome yeah this is actually really perfect i'm and i when you said the shower head i'm like why would i want to filter my shower head? i mean that's immediately what i thought of like who cares and that, that's, me if i'm not drinking it yeah and that's what's so interesting with that one is you know you've always got you can take a problem that people are already very aware of and then just show them that it can be solved and there are some things that people don't know and then suddenly they know and they're like oh crap yeah <laughs> You know, it's the Shahid one's fascinating. Like, I had no idea, right, until I did the research. And then suddenly it's one of those things where, it, and the reason I, I like it a lot for selling as well is there's an immediate benefit. Within three or four days, a lot of people actually right. get this result. With drinking clean water, if you start drinking a lot more water, you are going to feel better. Like, I'm yet to find somebody who's like, oh, I'm drinking all this water and I just feel lethargic and shitty and I right. can't stand it. Um, but, you know, removing contaminants is a slow it's peace of mind really. And it's, you know, it's prevention more so than treatment. Yeah. Um, and with the shower head, there's actually an immediate benefit that people can feel. And that makes a big difference in, in, you know, being able to sell it as well as retention. When people are like, if I don't use this filter yeah. trap, I get dry skin or an itchy head. Right. <laughs> you know, before we started, we talked about kind of the emotional mental exercise because you care about this and um, it takes longer than we think. So what's taken longer than you've thought so far? Cause okay, you've maybe. already done it once for the other company. So you expect, okay, in a year, 15 million, right? So what's taken longer than you thought? Yeah. So I think part of it is when you're, when you are part of a team, there are, there are little pieces and little things getting done <clears throat> that you're not super aware of. Yeah. You may be aware of, but you underestimate when you've got four people full time. You know, what was interesting about what we did before is we had literally a team of essentially the owner buying traffic, me writing copy, and then we had a developer, um, like marketing, like developer type guy. And like that was our marketing team. And so most people have, you know, multiple copywriters. They've got, you know, different writers. It's just different, you know, there's like 10, you know, to do what we were doing, you know, you normally like 10, 10 people at least on a team. We had, it was really lean, which keeps it <clears throat> compact. But honestly, dev shit, God, the technical stuff first has always driven me mental. <laughs> um, but not having myself, not having a technical background, knowing that I'm not going to do it and learn it because it's a waste of my time. Um, <laughs> the uh, sort of the main um, the main thing a lot of it's technical and just it's just these intangibles like for me I became so obsessed with money is, you know is uh, you know money is equated to speed <clears throat> and which is actually bullshit it's it's pace speed is you know money's attracted to speed it's really attracted to pace yeah what do you mean speed, by that yeah like the difference is speed is just a measure of of actual, you know, forward or backward momentum. It's a, it's a rate at which you're moving. So pace is the time that you can maintain a velocity for it. Mm -hmm. And velocity is important because velocity dictates direction, right? I can go super fast in the wrong direction. Right. Doesn't matter. Right. But pace, but also how long can I sustain that speed for? If I can't sustain it, then it doesn't really matter. So I'd rather keep a consistent pace, a quick pace, then, and that typically actually means, you know, within the business world, sprint, rest, sprint, rest. But, <clears throat> you know, I've become so obsessed with if I can't get it done because I've done VSLs so quickly and I've done everything way faster than, you know, most people do them. 
I'm like, all right, I can have a VSL up in two days. Like this business is going to be running in three weeks, two and a half months later, you know, you've still patching the piece together and then it's finally going. And then your puppy goes to the hospital right. and then, you know, and, <clears throat> and you have all these intangibles that come up and you've got five other businesses and you've got all this stuff, but really a lot of it comes down to technical pieces. And then something like, I never, I like, I never get sick. I've been sick in like five years. And of course I get like a scratchy throat and stuff, which could be mental, emotional stuff from like being scared of this project. Um, but it's really just the fact that I'm waking up every four hours to feed a dog and probably drinking too, too much alcohol and not enough sleep. Um, but it's really frustrating because I can't film right now. Yeah. I can't film and I can't, do, I can't redo the voiceovers because my voice sounds like shit, which is ironic because I'm talking about health right now and I probably sound unhealthy. Um, <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, that's part of transparency too, right? I'm what was the long – like for that two months, you said like I get this due and done three weeks and it's two and a half months. Is it the longest – is the delay so part the of technical like, piece or what? Um, I would say – so there's pieces of sorting stuff out the manufacturer, um, <clears throat> getting those pieces in place. Yeah. Uh, sometimes little things like names, like picking a name can take time and we went through iterations of how do we pick the name and then once we got on fixed water yeah. like okay yeah this is the one yeah. um but that can take a few days that can take you know a week yeah and it because it is important like what's interesting is having done this before my goal is to build it slower than we want right. it's it's like i view it like a relationship <clears throat> you just meet this beautiful girl she's fantastic and you want to move super quick and you want to spend every day together. And, you know, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But the one thing I do know is <clears throat> no, no relationships ever gotten worse because you took it slower, right. right? But they have gotten worse because you moved too fast. So building a real infrastructure and having systems and ops in place yeah. for this business in advance is really yeah. important because right. we're treating this like a business that's going to be around for years and years and years, right. not like an offer or an opportunity right. that we're just going to run for a bit and make some money from. Yeah. This is something we want to run. So instead of trying to hit a million the first month, let's do a hundred K the first month. Let's, you know, then let's double that. And by January, let's be doing a million a month yeah. and let's, let, let's be okay with that. You know, we don't have to come out the gate and absolutely annihilate it. Yeah. Um, but there are just little, like, I mean, we're using click funnels at the moment and it drives me insane and I don't want to use it, but for the sake of speed, and go, but then you have all these. A lot of it is sort of dev and technical stuff yeah. that just gets frustrating. Um, so what do you use now? Then, like, so you use ClickFunnels, shopping cart stuff. Is that in? Uh, in where you, we're literally using. So that was the other thing. We're like, okay, payment processing. Like I've seen, like if you get if your merchant accounts get messed up, your whole business can get crippled, and it's not a problem until it's a problem, and then it's the only problem. Right. And when you're doing twenty, fifty, hundred grand a day. You know, even having a merchant account down for two hours right. can cost you five figures. Yeah. So in advance, because I've seen all the issues and I've seen all the failure points before, yeah. you have this new perspective of preparing. Right. And that does take longer, but maybe it yeah. doesn't get broken in the end because of that. So, <clears throat> you know, that's that's played a role um, as well as just, it's honestly, even looking back, I'm like, <laughs> part of it's just intangible stuff that just like, Things just lag. People take longer. There's not always the same sense of urgency for everyone. Right. Um, and when you <clears throat> you kind of put you do put pressure on yourself for something like this because I've made it work before. You go, oh, I've got to crush it out of gate. You know, I'm gonna. You know, you, you've got this, and I actually care for once. Like business has come relatively easily for me up to this point, so I've never really cared that much. Like, I don't get bent out of shape about it. If something doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, whatever, but this, I'm like, man, we're actually doing something real. We're getting to actually help people. Right. And it's a topic I care about. It's my face. It's my, and it's my company and I'm responsible for that. And so you start to, you know, build up different resistance points based on, um, it's the first business that scared me. Why? My business partner and I got off a call once we were both like, did you get a little knot in your stomach from that one? And we were both like, yeah. What was it? It was like, it's it's a bit of fear. Like this is going to be, this is real. This is a real business. This is going to be, and I say real business. I mean, 
you know, the other businesses are real businesses, but this is something I care about. It's something that, you know, plan to have in five years. It's a global it's impact. Can, yeah, it's something where we think we can get to 100 million a year. And so, but the thing is to get there, you have to get <coughs> that first sale, Yeah, which we've done now. But sort of slowly building up that um, that scale and just focusing on sort of these little pieces. What scares yeah. me? I hate thinking small. You know, this board of all these, the big ideas, all the fun stuff, but none of that gets done. <clears throat> like I don't get to do any of that until the one little thing is working. Right. So, and then there are little things like, oh, we're supposed to have traffic running from a media buyer um, last Thursday. And now because we can't put a flipping tracking pixel on the checkout page in ClickFunnels, we're now five days down the road mm. and we still haven't run it. And that's five days of testing time that could dramatically change the timeline of what right. we're doing. A lot of right. it, though, is so just being okay with it. Yeah. I want to know now. I want to get, I want to solve this shit. I want to, you know, get this all, you know, yeah. churning. But sometimes you just got to relax yeah. and, and realize that life happens. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of those little things, like you said, and some of those failure points, like the processor or, or, or whatever it is, what do you decide to use for that? Does ClickFunnels have a solution for a processor, or do you have to go to a separate company? Uh, we're using Stripe right now, Stripe. and then we're getting bids for other merchant accounts. Yeah. Um, but you know, Stripe can just hold on to your money, and then uh, yeah. <clears throat> we're going to use another. We were originally supposed to, that actually one of the biggest holdups was we were essentially originally supposed to go through a very large digital marketplace that you. <clears throat> I mean, I could. I, don't know, I just won't say it, I guess, but that you would absolutely know of. Right. Um, and they came to us and they, they really want the offer because it's a legit product. They want to sell a high quality physical product. Right. Um, but what they came back from the VSL, like the amount of legal, like insanity that they went, like that they broke down was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. At least not right now. So that went from, that was what we were waiting on. Mm. And that was just two or three weeks of just waiting. Right. And then you get that back and it's like, okay, now I have to, you know, that's that's out of the question yeah. for right now. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's stuff like that where that suddenly that's three weeks just yeah. sort of wasted. So I interviewed the founder of Easy Pay Direct. I don't know if that's uh, something he, you looked at. I, I know Brad's one of okay. my close you, friends. Okay. I had him the other night. He We actually filmed for his company here at this table I'm sitting at. So I know, I know Brad. He had some yeah. good thoughts on that, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's why working with him is the re and well, the experience we had with merchant accounts before is why I'm aware of it in, in advance because people don't yeah. think like, okay, we want to process a million in January. You've got to warm up your mids. You've got to get a hundred thousand through this company, you know, through this mid, through this one, through right. this one. And as a when you're starting out, <clears throat> and even people who are quite experienced, if you've never had a merchant account issue, you're not thinking about it. Right. You're just hey, we're on the internet. We can just collect money. Not necessarily. <laughs> You can do all the selling in the world. Right. You're the best salesperson ever. But if you right. can't collect the actual money, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And if you wait for the problem to happen, again, a lot of late. moving pieces. <laughs> so you know, I want to go back. Um, I'm sure when you were growing up, you weren't like, "I want to sell water pitchers and filters one day." So, where did you grow up, and and when you were young, what did you want to do? Uh, I grew up partially in England and partially in California, which we probably should have said at the beginning because people are going to be sitting here just wondering what my accent is the whole time. Basically, means I sound Australian. Um, <coughs> and uh, I, I played I played tennis in in college and you did, and, uh, yeah. I, <coughs> I my dad, you know, told people I was going to win Wimbledon from age five. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, so I <clears throat> I played tennis from three years old till I try not to play much anymore. But my mum and dad are actually number one in the world for their age. Wow! Uh, right now, and so right now, they occasionally yeah. So occasionally they'll pull me out to play like father son. My dad and I. <clears throat> That's crazy. I don't normally tell people I play tennis, but yeah, my dad and I played a national. We were number two in the nation actually. Wow! Now and I, I never play um, anymore. But <clears throat> I, I was an athlete basically. I played sports. Um, and then, uh, do you have video? Are there videos of you playing anywhere? I don't know. Probably. I, I want to put know. this on the page when we post. I wonder if there are any videos. Does your dad have any? 
it's filming tennis matches is I, I'm sure there are videos that I, I have some on my phone. I'm sure from back when I was playing. Um, but, uh, so I basically played sports and then I actually, weirdly enough, I've heard something that basically what you were doing when you were like 10, um, is what you should do when you're older. Really? And I think that's, it's kind of, it's a broad statement. I feel like, cause it's like, Oh, you're, you're an accountant. We, we, we really going to be doing them. But then you hear those weird stories of kids who are like doing their parents' taxes at 10. Um, <laughs> That was not me. But actually, yeah. I did some uh, acting stuff just like at school. And then I did, um, I was never like a theater kid or anything, but I, I did some plays and stuff. And then I would make videos with my friends. And then I just stopped for a long period of time. Right. And so ironic, kind of come back to just making funny videos. Because to me, that's just still about the most fun thing I can do. Because mm -hmm. even if nobody laughs or if nobody likes them, in the moment that I'm filming, right. I typically have the most fun I could possibly have. <clears throat> and we die of laughter. So did that, I honestly, so in college. Do you play played, tennis in college? Yeah, I played in you college. Did. Okay. Uh, and uh, and so that's that's what I basically went to school for was yeah. to tennis. And then uh, I hated it my whole life. I still hate it. Why? I hated it. It's, it's, it was never my thing. Was it's it a family. job? Like, it's a job. Like a job? Was, a job. It, was it like that from the beginning or just as you yeah. trained more and more, it's like if, became if, a job? Three years old, you know, that much pressure and... And I was also a psychopath on the tennis court. What do you I'm mean? Very, off the court, on the court, I made John McEnroe look like a teletub. <laughs> I was I mean, I've thrown rackets over fences, punched walls, cussed out refs. I've done, I had letters sent from the USTA. I was a nightmare. Um, if I kept calm, I would basically win. Um, but I was a nutcase. Uh, everybody in bad, they could, could win. Oh, um, God. It's funny because off the court, <clears throat> I'd like never get angry. Um, it it brings out all the darkest parts of my soul. Interesting. Um, That's a good tweet of all. I made John Macron look like a Teletubby. I like that. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. Um, <clears throat> so I, uh, but then in college, I was actually going to join the military. That was all I cared about. Really? I was going to the special forces and then going to Delta. And that was like all I thought about. All I, I slept. Why military? About everything. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to save lives. Like, I basically, it started out for me that I wanted the training. I got basically, and I'm have to go here in a minute, unfortunately, but uh, <clears throat> I got mugged when I was 15 um, at Knife Point in England, and, uh, and I didn't think it was that big a deal at the time, but those two minutes basically changed everything from there on. Um, I didn't notice it until I was about 19 that I, that I realized that that was such a big moment, but that's when I started doing martial arts, <clears throat> learning self-defense, and uh, got big into violence training and stuff like that. Um, but I realized that those two minutes, basically, it, when you're getting mugged at that age, especially when you're still forming your identity, um, what that person basically is doing is making you a slave. Hmm. For those moments, you're a slave. You have no control over anything. Um, and basically became obsessed with the idea that I would never be that person again who would be a victim. And hmm. a lot of people have traumatic experiences and then they become a victim. Yeah. Uh, chose not to, well. whether it was consciously or not. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted the training to be able to kill anyone, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so that I could you go myself. Yeah. Because I feel there's nothing, there's no worse feeling I've ever had in my life. I hope to never have that bad a feeling ever again. Hmm. Nobody should ever have to feel that. So after experiencing it, um, you become obsessed with, with not being that type of person. Yeah. Uh, so then the military was the logical sort of, I wanted all the training for special forces stuff. And then I actually, I liked the mission of the green berets, which was basically, um, going in and training the people, um, to be able to fight their own wars <coughs> and learning languages and shit. And so that was my plan. And then, uh, I ended up basically not being able to join. I got medically disqualified and couldn't go in. And so I had to reevaluate my entire life. And, uh, and so that's, that's why the water thing I think is a big deal to me is I saw myself as somebody who had a predisposition to being able to deal with violence. And that was how I was going to save people's lives. Yeah. Um, and now ironically with the water stuff, I think I have the capacity to save a lot more lives. So I think that scares me a bit. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, much more fear of the light than fear of the dark. You know, the yeah. realization of your true potential yeah. is typically the scariest thing. Yeah. Ian, unbelievable. there's rarely a time I actually lose track of the time and don't stay to the time. So I apologize. Ten minutes ago, but, so 
for me to stay on through that. But thank you. This has been remarkable. I can go on and on um, about because it's just amazing stories. So, but we'll leave people with that. And everyone should check out fixedwater.com, F I X T water.com. Final words, Ian. Where should, what should we leave people with? Uh, filter your water. Filter your uh, water, yeah. I mean, if also if any of the sort of just more fun stuff, me messing around, <coughs> making stupid videos, you can. Yeah. Where should we follow. point people towards for that? I mean, I post them just on my personal Facebook page, Ian Stanley, and then I have a page, Stand Up Conversions. Um, if if you so choose, people seem to to get a kick out of those videos. So there's another one, like an eighty twenty. I have eighty twenty email copy. Yeah. Either standupconversions dot com or eighty twenty email dot com. Yeah. where I teach yeah. marketing and teach sort of email copy yeah. and, and VSL writing and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, if you so, haven't gotten yeah. his, your sense of humor by now, the headline I think is how to become superhuman and kick being average square in the nuts using these little known life hacks. Oh, is that what's on there? I think that's the old 80-20 life oh, hack. That's where I used, to just, I used to just write total bullshit. Like I, I would write an email every day about whatever I was thinking. Um, but that's, yes, how to kick average in the nuts. Right. Ian. Thank you so much. Yeah, Absolute you. pleasure. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. You're awesome. Cool. Cheers, mate. Talk to you soon. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. 